This course is meant to introduce the basic concepts behind performing a Maven build with the Jenkins Automation Server. For those of you not familiar with Maven, it is a build automation tool similar to Ant that is provided by Apache. As a build tool, Maven automates common activities for building software, such as testing, generating documentation, compilation, and packaging. It is also extremely popular for its dependency management feature, which allows project dependencies to be managed using a simple naming convention that acts like an address. Maven provides us with the advantage of automating build steps or activities, which reduces the chances of errors and minimizes the time necessary to build our software. The tool has a standardized life cycle that consists of several goals for building a project. In order to work properly, Maven expects a standardized directory structure for a project. Now that you have some background on Maven, let's take a look at the contents of our course. We'll start out by installing the Maven integration plugin and configuring it to work within our Jenkins instance. Once configured, our Jenkins instance will include the extended support for Maven. This support includes dependency awareness and additional support for multi-module projects. From there, we'll create our first simple Maven project with Jenkins. The project will be stored in our Git repository and will contain the pom.xml file. The pom.xml file is a file specific to every Maven project. It provides a description of the project that Maven is able to use to properly build out the project. The POM will describe the project's dependencies, its relationship to other Maven projects, and the Maven plugins necessary to build the project's artifacts. We'll then explore how to take more granular control of Maven projects within Jenkins. To do this, we'll include additional build steps. Through the use of pre and post steps, we can surround the build work performed by Maven with our own custom steps. This provides us full control over the Maven build within Jenkins. From there, we'll demonstrate the Maven integration plugin's support for dependency management. You will see how the plugin is intelligent enough to detect dependencies between Maven projects. Once it detects these dependencies that are shared between projects that are found in Jenkins, the plugin is able to determine when a build should be performed based upon those relationships between our Jenkins projects. We'll also discuss the concept of multi-module Maven projects. These projects allow a top-level Maven project to be used to manage several sub-projects. Finally, I'd like to take a minute to mention the difference between Maven and Jenkins because it can seem like the two tools perform the same function or there's a lot of overlap. Maven is focused on building your software project. In other words, providing the most effective way to compile, document, and test your code. Ultimately, Maven will build artifacts such as jars or wars that are based upon your source code. Jenkins, on the other hand, operates at a higher level. It is used to manage many software projects and orchestrates the activities necessary to build and deploy source code. Put another way, Jenkins is the conductor of the orchestra, while Maven is a member of the orchestra playing an instrument. Maven will take commands from Jenkins and perform those commands to build our software as determined by Jenkins' orchestration of our delivery of our software projects. In this lesson, we will download and install the Maven integration plugin for Jenkins. This plugin will integrate Jenkins with the third party Maven build tool, which we can then use to build Maven projects. To get started, we're first going to find the plugin within the plugin index so that we can see its documentation. So, from the Jenkins homepage, I navigate to the plugin section on the menu we'll simply type Maven. Once we conduct our search, you'll see that there are several plugins related to Maven within the Jenkins index. In order to find the integration plugin, we'll just click on the most installed sort, 
and here you see that the Maven integration plugin rises to the top. It has over 124,000 installs into Jenkins instances, so this is a pretty popular plugin. If we take a look at the plugin documentation, one of the things that you will see noted is that historically this plugin was delivered with Jenkins as part of the typical install. That practice was eventually stopped as Maven tooling was built into Jenkins. However, the Maven integration plugin still provides additional capabilities for Maven beyond the built-in support for Maven within Jenkins. Let's now navigate over to our Jenkins installation and we'll head into the Manage Jenkins section by clicking on Manage Jenkins on our left sidebar and we'll head into Manage Plugins. From there, we're going to go to the Available tab. On that tab, we can search for Maven integration. There we see the plugin. Its current version is 2.15.1. Once we have checked the checkbox to the left side of the plugin, we can download now and install after restart. You'll notice that there is a dependency on the Javadoc plugin that is required for the Maven integration plugin. So you can see also that we have successfully downloaded the plugin. It will be activated during our next boot. So I'm just going to go into my services. From here, I can navigate to Jenkins, restart the Jenkins service. It should start to come up here in a minute. We can hit our local installation on port 8,888. Once Jenkins is ready, it will load in our browser. We log in with our credentials. I'm going in as an admin. Now that we're logged in, we can create a new item. And you'll see that we have the option to create a Maven project. We have successfully installed the Maven integration plugin. And that's going to provide us with additional integrations for the Maven build system within our Jenkins instance. In this lesson, we will update our Jenkins configuration so that it can integrate with Maven. Completing this integration will allow us then to use the Maven build tool to build a Maven project. To get started, I'm going to navigate to my desktop. And on the desktop, you'll see the directory that I have installed Apache Maven. If I drill down into that directory, I can simply copy the path to the Maven installation. From here, I'm going to return back to Jenkins and navigate to the Manage Jenkins section. Within this section, I can access the global tool configuration. The form for the global tool configuration provides several options for configuring third-party tools. At the bottom of the form, you'll notice the section for Maven. If we click on the Add Maven button, you'll see that we now have some fields that can provide information regarding our local Maven installation. We could have Jenkins go out and download Maven for us automatically. Since we have already installed the tool, we're going to go about it in a more manual approach. In the Maven home field, go ahead and paste the path to our Maven installation. You'll notice that we're using Maven 3.3.9. In the name for this installation, we're going to include that version number just so we know what version of Maven we're using in case we were to have multiple versions available to us. At this point, we can go ahead and hit save, and our system is now configured to integrate with Maven. This will allow us to utilize the Maven software when we are building a Maven project. In this lesson, we will set up our first Maven project within Jenkins. This is a much more preferable approach as opposed to building out our Java projects using some command line options. Instead, we're going to move over to use a build tool like Maven so that we can have more robust functionality in our builds. 
To get started with that process, we click on the New Item option on the left sidebar, and we're going to create a project named Maven Test. We'll then select the Maven Project option from the list of available items. We'll then go ahead and hit OK. That's going to establish our new Maven project, and we're able to now configure this project's build. So you'll see a form very similar to the other builds and projects we've established. We'll work through the different options within this form as we complete the course. The first thing that we're going to set is the JDK. We'll set the JDK to version 1.8. Now we need to get some source code for our project. We're going to be using Git. If we navigate to our desktop and look in the workspace directory, you should find the Maven test project. This project will be included within your working files for the course. You see that there is a pom.xml file. That's the basic description of the project that Maven uses to build the application. Navigating back to the workspace directory, you can right click on that directory, select git bash here. What we're going to do now is establish a git repository. You can see that we're sitting within the Maven test directory. I'm going to git init that simply says, make this a git repository. Now, if we take a look, you're going to see there are a bunch of files that are not tracked by Git. So we can change that. We're going to add those files to Git stage using the Git add and then the wildcard. From there, we can then commit those files. So that's simply git commit dash m and we provide our comment. We'll say it's the first commit. At this point, we have those files in our Git repository and we are ready to link that repository to Jenkins. And the way we do that is simply by taking the path to the local repository and providing it in the configuration within Jenkins. If you are using a source code repository like GitHub, uh, this may be more of a URL as opposed to a local path, but for our purposes, we're strictly using these local repositories. We're fine with this being the master branch. We'll take a look at changing some of these options later. At the moment, we're just going to do some very, very simple configurations for this project. Right now, you see that it is pointing at the root pom, so that pom.xml file that sits within the root of our project's directory. We need to specify a goal for our projects. Let's go ahead and say that we would like to install. So this is a Maven goal, and it basically says that you would like to install any artifacts from building this project into a local Maven repository. This should be enough configuration for now so that we can go ahead and build our project. We click on build now, and that will schedule a build of the Maven test project. Let's see what happens. Project's currently building. It was successful. So if we click on the build, you'll see the build took 3.7 seconds. We can look at the console output, and here you're going to see Maven performing a lot of its work with this build. Here we see some console output from Maven. Here we see it's starting to build the snapshot since that is the version of the project we are working with. And it performs its work. And then we see very simply that we have build success and we were able to use Maven to build a project. And that build was kicked off by our Jenkins continuous integration server. This is an important step because with the tooling that is provided, as part of the Maven build, we're able to perform a little bit more complex of a build for our projects that can have features of Maven leveraged in that build process. If we take a look at our newly created Maven project and we inspect its configuration, 
you'll notice that within the build section of our project's configuration, we are limited to only executing Maven goals. This is a little bit restrictive because we can only execute actions or capabilities provided to us by Maven in the main section of our build. To combat this, the Maven integration plugin provides us with pre-steps and post-steps. These two sections of the build configuration allow us to execute build steps before and after the Maven goals are executed within our build. This grants us additional flexibility because we have more control over the build steps that take place when creating our Maven project and building that project. Let's take a look at the options we have within the pre-steps. You'll notice that these options are the exact same options we have when creating a freestyle build. We would see these same build steps in the freestyle build. And the same goes for our post steps. The post steps allow us to do things like execute a batch command, a shell command, execute a Maven target, run with a timeout, or use a Gradle script. You'll also notice that in the post steps section, we have the option to conditionally execute these steps. They're pretty simple. We can run if the build succeeds, run if it's successful or is unstable, or run regardless of the build result. In our case, we're going to focus on running a batch command when the build succeeds. Before we dive into that, though, let's talk a little bit about the command we're going to run. If we take a look at our Maven project, so I'm just navigating to my desktop and entering the workspace. Here we see the project, and there's the POM file. We can dive into the source code for our application. When we take a look at the main class, Hello World Maven, you don't need to be a seasoned Java veteran to realize that we're simply outputting some information to the console. We're saying hello from a Maven project. That's what we're going to do. Once we build our jar file that's associated with this project, we're going to execute the main method in the Hello World Maven class. Within Jenkins, we can get some more information about where that jar file is located. So if we navigate back to our project and we take a look at that first build and the console output for it, you're going to notice that it tells us the path where that jar file was placed. Here we see target backslash maven dash test dash 0.0.1 dash snapshot dot jar. That is the jar file that gets created from our Maven build. It's simply a combination of the artifact ID and the version. The artifact ID being maven test and the version being 0.0.1 snapshot. So if we take and copy that information, we can head back to our project and enter its configuration. Let's head to the post steps. We're going to add a Windows batch command. We're simply going to execute the Java command. We'll provide the class path, which will include our jar file. And then we're going to specify the fully qualified name of our class. Our class resided in the com.oreilly.jenkins package, and it was the Hello World Maven class. What we'll see happen is the Maven portion of our project's build will execute, and it's going to create that jar file associated with the project. It will install the jar into our local Maven repository, and then we're going to access that jar file from within our Jenkins workspace, and we're going to execute the main method inside that class. One thing I should point out is that we have a post steps section and also a post build actions section. We should talk a little bit about the differences between these two. The post steps should be things that are associated with building your project. Really, in our case, the example here would not apply. We're just using it because it's simple and it will save us some time. 
The post build actions are actions that you want to perform once the build has completed. This might be something like a notification, or maybe there's other things that you would like to do with the artifacts created by the build of this project. Just a little bit of information about the differences between those two sections in our project configuration. Now let's go ahead and save. And at this point, we are ready to run our build. If I just kick off a build by hitting build now, there we see the build is running. And let's see what the outcome is. Build 5 was successful, and we can navigate down into Build 5 and take a look at the console output. Here we see Maven performing its build. Eventually, we have build success. It's always good to see that. Then once we have had a successful build, you see that we run the application, and we get our message printed out to the console. And here we actually see our post step that we specified. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at another great feature provided by the Maven integration plugin for Jenkins. That feature is the plugin's ability to automatically trigger builds based upon dependencies. We currently have our Maven test project, which is a Maven project within our Jenkins instance. If we take a look at that project, I'm navigating to our workspace where we are holding our Git repository, taking a look at the source code. What you're going to see is that I've changed the source code, and you can find this in your working directory. The source code has been changed in order to use a message source class. This is a very simple class that I created that provides us with a static message. What is special about this? is that the class is not found within this project. Instead, we have created a dependency on another project that holds the class. It's a very simple dependency that we've specified within our POM file. If you are familiar with Maven, you should understand its dependency management principles. Basically, you can provide the coordinates to a dependency that your project uses, and that dependency is then pulled from a repository. Here you see that the artifact we are using is the Maven test dependency. And if we further explore our workspace that contains our Git repositories, you'll see the Maven test dependency. It is a Maven project as well. And if we take a look at the source code within this project, you'll see our very simple class. So it's just saying hello from the message source. What we're going to do is set up a project within Jenkins for our Maven test dependency project. Then we're going to observe the automatic build of the dependency and the dependent project. Let's navigate back over to Jenkins, and we're going to create a new item. The first item we're going to create here is a Maven project. We're going to specify the name Maven Test Dependency. We can go ahead and hit OK to build our new project. We're going to select JDK 8 to build the project. Now we're going to provide the path to the Git repository on our local machine. We can navigate to that repository. You see I've already committed it to Git. You do that just like we did the other project, same steps. We can post that URL within our form to configure our project. Let's also set up a build trigger for every minute. Finally we're going to specify the install goal. I'm going to go ahead and save our configuration of this project. Let's just go ahead and build this project quickly. There we see a successful build of our Maven test dependency project. One of the things you'll notice as we dive into this build, the Maven test project has been identified as a downstream build. 
the integration plugin was smart enough to realize that our Maven test project has a dependency on the Maven test dependency. Because of that, we are able to automatically trigger builds of the downstream project when the Maven test dependency project is built. If we take a look at the console output for this build, you'll see that we did indeed create a jar file for our Maven test dependency build. So we have an artifact from our build that we can leverage in the Maven test project. What I'm going to do is grab this path where we've stored that artifact, and we're going to need that for the build of the Maven test project. So we have the dependency established, you'll notice that the Maven test project has had an unsuccessful build. That's because our class path is not properly configured. Let's head into the configuration of this project. We can change our class path to include the newly created jar. Since there are spaces in that path, we need to surround our path within double quotes. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Now let's head back to our dashboard. For this, I'm going to turn on auto refresh so we can see the automatic triggering take effect. Here, if I execute a build of our test dependency, we can see the build start to execute in the build executor status. After that project is built, the Maven integration plugin is smart enough to realize that Maven test has that dependency. And now we see Maven test start to build. We see that Maven test was successful. So if we go in, we look at the most recent build and the console output, you can see we get the message that came from the message source dependency. Let's take a look at another really cool feature here. Since we set up the polling of this repository, we can go in. Let's navigate in with the bash console. If we take a look, we can go into source, then main. We should find our class here. We still need to go down through the package structure. There's our class. We can modify that class. So I'll go in with VI. I'm going to simply change the message that is included in this simple string. Let's just change hello to hi. We can take out those characters. We'll write the file. We've just changed the file to say hi from the message source. Now we can commit those changes. Now if we head back over to Jenkins, let's go to our dashboard. We should see the polling pick up a change in the source code repository. Pretty shortly, we should see Maven test dependency start to build. It's set to pull every minute. There it goes. So it picked up that change we just put in the source code repository. Now it's building Maven test dependency. Once that finishes building, we're now going to see Maven test build. It should be coming up shortly. There it is. The build's in progress. Now it's completed. Let's head into the project. We'll take a look at build 19, which was triggered by those changes to our source code. And if we look at our console output, you can see we now say hi from the message source. That's pretty cool. What you're starting to see is the foundation of a continuous integration or continuous delivery or continuous deployment pipeline. We have polling set up on our source code repository. We have a build system in place, Maven. We're identifying dependencies between our different projects, and we are able to automatically trigger builds when a upstream project changes, and that would impact the downstream project. So in our case, Maven test would be our downstream project, where Maven test dependency would be the upstream project. And we're able to set up this sort of automation with very complex projects using these simple principles. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how the Maven integration plugin for Jenkins 
handles multi-module projects. A multi-module Maven project is a project that is structured where a top-level project contains several sub-projects that are all built together in a cohesive unit. In order to demonstrate this capability, we'll need our own multi-module project. If we navigate into our workspace, which holds our Git repositories, you'll see the multi-module root. You can find this within the working files for this course. You'll notice that the multi-module root has its own POM. If we were to open that POM, you will see that it contains two modules, Module 1 and Module 2. We can see those two modules within the directory of the project. Those modules themselves have their own POM files, which specify their dependencies. When building this project, we would need to build Multi-Module 1 and Multi-Module 2 to complete the build of the entire Multi-Module root project. And that's what we're going to set up within Jenkins. The first thing we're going to do is get this project into source control. Within the Multi-Module root directory, I'm going to open a bash console and I can just init a git repository, add all of the files, and then commit them. Now we have the files stored within a repository. We can grab the path to that repository so that we can set up the project within Jenkins. Let's create a new item. We're going to call this the Maven Multi-Module Project. We'll select the Maven Project type and hit OK. Within the Maven Multi-Module Project, we're going to set the JDK to 1.8. We're going to establish the link to our Git repository. And we're going to specify we would like to run the install goal for Maven. So I'm going to go ahead and save our project. You'll immediately notice that we have the modules option listed on the left-hand sidebar for this project. The modules will not be picked up within Jenkins until we perform a build. So let's go ahead and build our multi-module project. We should see shortly that the modules will become available once we have completed our build. The build has been completed. Now if I click on the modules option, you see that Jenkins, through the Maven integration plugin, was able to determine that we have a top-level project that has two sub-level projects, and it's able to pick up that relationship between them. You also see that we're able to drill down into a particular module. We can see the build history for that module as well. Artifacts are also automatically generated for each module of our multi-module project. We are also able to build each module individually. So if I would simply like to build multi-module 1, I can go ahead and hit build now, and we will create a second build for the module. We can go in and see the output of that build by looking at the console output for that single module. We can see that the build of that module was successful. You'll also notice that fingerprints are created for each artifact within the multi-module project. Navigating back to the top level project, we get the higher overall view that we can then use to manage the multi-module project. This provides a great way to divide our projects into manageable units, and it facilitates how we can then manage building out those projects as one logical group. Before we conclude our course on performing Maven builds within Jenkins, let's take a minute to recap. During this course, we saw how to install the Maven integration plugin within Jenkins and how to configure the plugin to perform Maven builds inside of our Jenkins automation server. We learned how Maven can be used to standardize our build process. It's much better to have an established build tool such as Maven 
building and compiling, documenting and testing our software, then stringing together a bunch of batch commands or shell commands. Having this established platform, along with its dependency management features, is a great complement to the continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment practices that we're establishing within Jenkins. We took a look at how the Maven integration plugin provided additional support for our Maven projects. It provided an extremely handy feature that allowed the project dependencies to trigger builds of their downstream projects. We saw the relationship between upstream and downstream projects. We saw how a change in an upstream project can trigger a build in a project downstream. We also saw support for the multi-module projects and how they can be leveraged within a Jenkins instance. Now that we understand how to integrate Maven with Jenkins, let's talk about where we should take a look next. The next step would be to look at how we can build quality assurance into our continuous integration practices. You'll see that within Maven and Jenkins, there is the ability to implement quality checks that make sure that we are deploying a project that is up to our standards. Thanks again for checking out this course. 